Hornets trying to get into the playoffs. Aaron Gordon and the Magic. Early crossover. Sad to think about what would happen if, don't want to spoil it, they don't get in. Could this be the last game for Kemba? Meanwhile, Terrence Ross, resurgent kind of year for him. Boy, he's really played well down the stretch, hasn't he? Yes, sir. Had 19 coach in the half. Ooh. And a big part of it, you look at them in the playoffs, you need some help from that secondary score. No question about it. Shot maker. In playoffs, come on. Make. That's the whole key, coach. Can you make open shots? Well, they were uh, going down tonight, early lead. They're up 11. But Kevin goes back to work. Driving the lane, and this time, raise up. Throw it down. 22 in the half for Kemba Walker, who would close it out, cutting it to four, 62 to 58, hanging around. But the guy who hangs on the rim would have something to say about it, Aaron Gordon. Oh, yeah, you must box out, Coach, because he has hops, not hopes. How can nobody have a body on <laughs> I got it, you got it. There was like a pop fly yeah. that dropped in the Bermuda Four Triangle. On case. Uh, yeah, that was not said the way you want to do it. <laughs> Work on that in Summer League. Yeah. Good oh, CJ. Oh, hello. All season long, been getting it done. Kemba. Uh, look, you knew he wasn't going to give up. Doing his best. Pull up, step back for three. Cuts it to three. 99-96, but too much T. Ross, coach. Again from deep. He must had a lot of points tonight, huh? Uh, he, he he did have a, a bunch of points. Uh, they did win by 12, or, or they were up 12, they won by 8. The Hornets going home. Kemba, perhaps last time we see him, the member of the Charlotte Hornets. Ooh, that wouldn't be good. Mm. It wouldn't be, but it's possible. Yeah. Pistons, they were down 19 to the, uh, the Grizzlies-ish, and then came back and found a way with Ish. They got off to a way better start, DZ, this time oh, at the Garden. Because Reggie, that Reggie Jackson showed up. At 14, in the quarter, Gray puts it home over Luke Cornett. Luke, I am your father. Lead 16, expanded. Good oh, arm. nice little show in pick a boo Andre Drummond, back to work. He's played great, hasn't he? Mm. Without, without having a sidekick there, he's taken over. He was 24 at the half. Pistons not perfect though, Andre oh, Drummond. Cookie. Jack and a fool. Oh, sorry, big fella. We're gonna have to get you, big fella. Yeah. That's not nerf hoop, that's nerf hoops. It's uh, it's easier to laugh when you're going to the postseason. Good call, Casey. Oh, the left hand's alive. Luke Kennard, the open three, the Pistons. They find themselves at the bottom, but in. In the eighth spot, they have made the playoffs. So, first of all, if it's Kemba's last week, Chuck, everything that he's done there has been so remarkable. Hopefully that continues. The relationship with the Pistons in this season does. And, Coach, I want to get to kind of them before we even talk about the matchup here for a second. When you look at, at Drummond and Blake and how it has worked when they've been healthy together, the questions of the point guard position, again, Ish Smith really key in the comeback just a night ago. What about the Pistons this up and down group going into this playoffs here. For Detroit to have a chance, a chance against Milwaukee, all the Pistons must be firing together. And I'm talking about your starting point guard and the backup point guard. They need both of them to play well and to make shots. You've got two guys. If Griff, if Blake can get healthy and play, you got two two guys on the glass that are gonna give anybody problems. Then Kennard has finally gotten into the groove. You think about him coming out of college, you say, this guy's a great shot maker. Got to the NBA, he wasn't a great shot maker. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, give him a little time, give him a little confidence, a little experience. He's making a shot, 9 of 14 tonight on his way to 27 points. That's a huge plus coming off the bench. You know, uh, DZ, shot making, that's really the question for the buck. I don't think anybody questions that Giannis is going to get points, he's going to make some great plays, but he can't do it on its own. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this year a, a great year out of Bledsoe, an all-star season out of Middleton. Brogdon will be back healthy, it looks like. They add some depth with Miritich. Sterling Brown's done a nice job. Is there enough of a supporting cast of guys who can make shots to help Giannis make a deep run? I, I think it's enough, Casey, and Coach. The question is very similar with that word trust. I said with Boston, is Giannis going to continue to trust his teammates like he's shown us all year long? He's going to have one of those 35, 40-point nights. But the reason he's going to have is because when he gets double-teamed early, 
kicking out the Chris Milton, kicking out the guys, believing they're going to make shots to loosen up the defense. The, the thing that Brooke Lopez is a trailing five man that when you double team, you're kicking out to him and he's shooting the deep three before all those other guys get healthy. That lets me know trust once again. Giannis for Detroit. That's the double head. That's why. It's it was A lot of dough to him. Let's take He's going anywhere. Exactly. By the way, poor our, our guy. He <laughs> on the west side, the Bucks haven't gotten maybe the credit they've deserved. We will debate that much asked question. And nope. Nobody is debating this. James Harden can put up. Shea Gilgis, Alexander, and the Clippers. Eight, make it ten up on the Jazz. Playoff positioning, it's a battle, but not for them. They know they're in for a battle of their own. The Warriors are up on the docket next for Dock and Company as we welcome you in. And you should settle it because we will take you through all the... Yes, that part it's is. official? That is official. Ooh. Officially official. All through the late night Ooh. into when they release the schedule, which will be the really... Late night. So lots of coffee will be steaming here. Good to have you. 3D, Mr. Players Only, the coach, Zara himself, Mike Fratello here. Uh, let, we're going to talk a lot about the Easter Conference, which is set. Let's start with the West, though, because the Clippers, DZ, are in that first step of what could be a very interesting next few years, depending upon what happens the next couple of months. But at the same time, they're not going to take lightly the opportunity they've got here to try and maybe shock the world a little bit and at least compete with the Warriors. You bring up a good point, Casey. I remember uh, Jared and I had Mr. Balmer here uh, before one of the pregame shows, and he talked about everyone overstating the fact they may lose the draft pick if they make the playoffs. He's like, I love basketball. I love winning. So I know we've made some moves that most people think is not conducive to those draft picks, but we're in the playoffs. Why not be in the playoffs? Why not sell our fans on playing the right way? We use that word culture so much. So I'm not mad at Doc. I like what Lawrence Frank and all those guys have done. Make some moves. Now you're getting in the playoffs. You still have cap space. You still have all those other things we talk about. So so what? You may lose a draft pick, but you're going into the playoffs. They got better. They got younger. They became more competitive. Mm -hmm. Their spirit and charisma within the team is so much better. Doc is happy coaching this group because he appreciates how hard they play. This is a great opportunity, the fact that they did all of this and made the playoffs. Yeah, I, to use Billy Crystal, since he's a big Clipper guy, at a movie I admit I'm fond of, The Princess Bride, where uh, he says that mostly dead. People thought that's what they were in when the Tobias Harris deal right. was done. Not so much. They're one of these teams, though, Coach, that if you're the Warriors, the Warriors may not lose a game in this series. They may not. But they're going to take some bumps and bruises for the Patrick Beverleys and the Montrezl Harrells of the world. This team not going to make anything easy on you within four quarters of then The one thing Doc loves about this team is they come out, they compete night in, night out, led by Patrick Beverly. Got a little bit of toughness in this group right now. You've got the spirit of the young people. You know, young people sometimes don't know that they're not supposed to win. They go out there and they're saying, they're listening to what Patrick Beverly has to say as the leader saying all we got to do is knock them off one time early, and then the whole thing turns around. The young spirit within them. I, look, Golden State, there's a whole lot to overtake, okay? But you never know in basketball. One hey, injury changes the whole series. Hey, 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 we saw 16 beat a one, and then the one come back and went, oh, anything can happen in sports. Even DC Sierra doesn't say players only on the desk. So <laughs> we, we know anything can happen. It's The interesting part on the other side, quickly before we get to the East, and we were talking about this, our, uh, our, our researcher extraordinaire, uh, the, the head man in charge of all things Casey. Chicago Bulls. Yeah. Yes. Casey. Talking about that Casey? What? You're, you're yeah, Casey. Kevin Casey. Casey. Yeah, I mean, Casey. yeah. No, I'm Casey. <laughs> I mean, the Casey. I thought you were just like shouting my he name. Said he's Casey. That's Coach, the you know this Casey. is live right. television, right? This is the, sure know. We're an end of season form. You yes. know when they say mid season yes. form? Yes. This is what we can't end, wait, baby. This is the playoffs are finally this, here. This is what end of season form looks like. But on the other side for Utah, yeah, they don't care necessarily what happens here. They're, they need Portland to lose tonight so that they can play Portland. And you hate saying that, but the terrible injury that happened, DZ, with Nurkic. Oh, man. And where the Trailblazers are. And you've got Houston looming where if Portland were to win this game, they get a three. And Houston is playing Utah. Uh, that, that's, a, uh, that's a whole new ball of wax. So if you're sitting there and you're Utah, I think... 
Portland a nice matchup probably for them, right? Yeah, right? Yes. Well, yes. Well, to your point, with Nurkic going down, it makes things a totally different from a physicality standpoint because Nurkic have really turned that corner because we have been questioning Portland the last couple of years. Who's going to be that third cog right. that you can say if the jump shot's not going well with CJ and Dane, you can throw the ball to him. He was doing a great job of that this year. Now the injury. Now bringing in Hood, you bring in his canter. Can those guys collectively bring the numbers? Obviously, that's going to be the same way, Coach, but can both of those guys bring what they bring to the table and be a committee of guys that say we can do what the numbers say with Nurkic with lost? You always have to be careful of you know, asking for something sure. because it can backfire on you. However, having said all that, Look, would you rather play a team that's missing a center of his magnitude? Or James Harden. Yeah, or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this, any, remember, remember this. This is your brain. This is your brain. No brain. Any questions? <laughs> Are you going to ask us and answer all our questions tonight? Yeah. yeah. We know what we're doing. I, I, just, I just... As long as you just keep... You're just randomly in the middle of Casey. Yes, I'm still here. Uh, let's look at the East and where we sit there because we do know how those matchups are going to be. And there... We'll get into these a lot during the course of the evening and talk about all the different matchups... But I want to start with one, and Coach, I'll start with you, that is fascinating to me. And you've spent a lot of time watching this team build the last few years. And even though he's not going to win Coach of the Year this year, I think you could make a case the last two or three years, Kenny Atkins has done a good job as anybody in this sport. With the culture that Coach, he has put together, you've got a team that all works in the same direction against a team we've questioned if they're in the same direction. Quite a matchup, Brooklyn and Philly in that 3-6. It is uh, interesting to watch what they've done. Right? Thinking about the fact they had no draft picks for three straight years. That were their own picks. And Sean Marks, along with Kenny Atkinson, put this thing back together again. They took some gambles along the way. D'Angelo Russell coming out of the Lakers was not Mm -hmm. the D'Angelo Russell that he is today. Mm -hmm. They have put an emphasis on player development. Their coaching staff has spent hours and hours with these young guys. The Karis Leverts, the Allen at the center spot, who's just leaps and bounds better than when he first came in. Did a good job with a late pick here or there, acquired a pick here or there. And all of a sudden, this team, night in and out, scares you because the style they play, they're going to put up 43s. If they're making them, you're in a lot of trouble because they put it on the floor, they get to the foul line, draw fouls on their opponents. If they're making those threes, now, advantage inside, obviously, to Philadelphia. Because they have no one that can play and beat. But Philly better not take them too lightly. Because all they have to do is steal one. It's a short trip up and down the turnpike. The other thing is, too, the depth, which is an, an issue. It got better, mm-hmm. but it's still not great necessarily for Philadelphia. Brooklyn's right. got a lot of bodies. And the thing that's interesting, which I love about this series, is this, I think, gives us the best chance for in the East. Because, look, if Houston, Oklahoma City, that in itself is going to give you that rivalry playoff kind of atmosphere from, from minute one. I think this could be very interesting very quickly. When you think about the way, guys, that the toughness of Brooklyn presents itself, even the, the veterans, when you think of the Dudleys and the Carrolls and others they have, then you go look at Jimmy Butler. You've got Embiid. There's going to be some talking. This could be, you got, this could be a very interesting series between Brooklyn and Philadelphia in terms of the toughness. To Coach's point, if Embiid is not 100%, now you're going into this series saying, now this is one guy we know. If they don't play through him, now we don't weaken the weak side of our defense. Because to your point, Coach, you, if you play through Embiid, Jared Allen should be in foul trouble. Now you're double team every possession. Now it's swing, swing. Now you have those guys like J.J. Reddick making wide open jump shots on the weak side of the floor. But if he's not 100%, now you're asking Ben Simmons to be that guy. And now we're not sure. And this is where I, you know, we kind of called men out. Ben, are you ready for this challenge mm-hmm. that if Embiid's not 100%, more needs to go through you. You need to dominate your position because now if he gets double teamed with his size, because we know Ben can pick people apart and guys get wide open shots. So if you're Brooklyn, Jared Allen, one thing you do is just play defense all night long and rebound like tonight. He had 14 rebounds and not worry about his offensive end. I, I just like... Brooklyn's dogfight going into this series and making things very interesting. That it's not going to be easy, Coach. And now, last but not least, do what you do. Joe Harris, you shoot three. Shoot. shoot. And they got coach, shot you know, makers. Man, if you see a couple threes go down, now the crowd's going crazy. And people are yelling, Brooklyn. Come on, Coach. Things get interesting. Hey, Case, the thing you mentioned about lack of depth on Philadelphia. Yeah. If you check over the course of the season, look where Brooklyn's bench is every night. 
they almost every night they outscore their opponents because they come off right. that bench. Kenny uses bodies, them, and they feel like they're starters, just like the other guys. And they all got fouls in them, right? So, I, and that's the thing is like. You think about the driving to the bath, create your own shot. The things Levert, they've got big shot making. That series will be one to watch. I, I want to touch and we'll hit all of them on the Boston series for a second. Because, mm. first of all, Nate's done. I feel like this is a broken record, but there are so many great coaching jobs. Yeah. You must admire coach some of the work that we've seen. Total terrible situation with Victor Oladipo and what happened. Indiana hung in. I mean, really, as tough as they could. I don't think anybody expects them to beat Boston. But we never really know which Boston is showing up either. Is this as open shut a case as some people might think looking at this series? Well, what Boston is very fortunate about is the fact that it's not flipped around right there. And Playing Boston, in Indiana, right? Yeah, exactly. Where Indy had that advantage opening up in their own building mm -hmm. because uh, that team, if they keep it close with their defense, if they execute and you catch Boston on one of those nights, as you mentioned, which Boston is going to show up. Mm -hmm. Boston should win this series without question. But that's what the playoffs are about, finding out. I want to ask you, coaching and players, Stan, but we were talking about, like, what do the last 20 games mean and when the switch turns on? Now we can't hear Kyrie or anybody tell us, DZ, that it's the Raiders. In the, now you're in the playoffs, right? They're going to probably beat Indiana. This is probably going to happen. But their aspirations are to be in the finals. Right. What do they need to learn about each other as a team in that first-round matchup before they get to the big boys in the following rounds. It's going to sound real simple. Yeah. But it's trust. How important, though, is that? It's, it's really as simple as it's trust because last year, those young guys going as far as they did, they proved to Gordon and Kyrie, hey, we can do it. But we only can go but so far. We... Their leader, Kyrie, you're two of eight in the first quarter. Now Brad Stevens making some subs. Are you playing through the second unit? And that's for me, Coach. Well, my question is: Is there enough trust for Kyrie and Gordon Hayward to finally be healthy enough to say, guys, we're here to help you get over that next level? But hey, do you trust us as the young guys last year, proving we prove without you? You know, a tough game out of Indiana might be the best thing that can happen to Boston, because as we look down the stretch. What things have we seen? Well, one, we've seen Tatum start to get back to being what Tatum was about last year. Right. Two, we've seen Hayward playing his best basketball since the All-Star break. They know who the end of the game guy is. It's Kyrie Irving. Horford has been Mr. Steady yep. the entire time with this team. So now, if they get back together, understanding that. And we got some pretty good people coming off the bench to give us support. Rozier, the way he played last year in the playoffs was sensational. Gordon on top of his game right now, we're a pretty good team. But maybe a competitive game from Indiana shakes them and drives them, drives them back to being that cohesive unit that they need to be. The smart injury is something I'm I just want to bring going, up. Though, that's where I was going next. The, yeah. In watching the Celtics during the – he's the barometer mm -hmm. of almost bringing them back to – like solid ground. We say like take it back to basics. In the middle of games where they seem to be going off the wrong end, he will dive for a ball, make a play he's not supposed to, draw a charge, and almost kind of help things. Snap. He's that guy. Al does it in a quieter way, smart more in a vociferous manner. How much is that missed? It's, Even in the first round against Indiana, it's going to be missed tremendously because Brad Stevens has said on many occasions that you know Marcus Smart is one of his favorite players that he goes against. In today's basketball analytics, right, his his three point shooting numbers are down, but he makes that timely three and keeps shooting them, right, keeps shooting them. But most coaches would take a guy out of out of the game that's two of seven throughout the game. But Brad says, "No, I'm riding him because he makes that one that goes. We need that. Mm -hmm. You said it earlier. Things are going awry defensively. He gets that steal. He gets that loose ball to start the break, to start the fast break. They get an easy layup or easy three to start the run." That's what's going to be missed here in the first round. Terry Rozier becomes more important probably then because of that. Interesting to see how they work. How much is he on the floor with Kyrie? Do we see more of Brown? What do you do without Smart? Because that is a guy, obviously, that Coach Stevens relies on. Let me ask this. Is Marcus Smart the Patrick Beverly of the Boston I Celtics? think so. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that. That. Yeah, I'm trying to say his players. I, got I think so. I'm what, with yes. you, Coach. I'm what with do you give to that team? Yeah. Yes. I'm with you. With and, you. and you could say, I mean, look, it's during the years of the Warriors, Draymond, 
I mean, I, I'm the different players, but that guy who you know is going to always have the toughest can get in somebody on the team's face. And because he plays at a certain level, smart at a 10 almost all the time, there's a respect for that. We're okay. I got to you know, raise my level of effort to where he is. On the Indiana side, it's difficult when you lose a star. Mm. You know, last year in the playoffs, coach, Victor Oladipo, that was to me, forget about shining during the season, when it was like, wow, okay, he really has arrived. That's going to be interesting to see if they play tight games, which they do often, they're probably going to be in it. How do they handle those moments offensively for Nate and his group in that fourth quarter without that? I think part of it, look, we know they start with defense first. You got the leading shot blocker in the NBA and backed up by Sabonis, who at times started during the year. Or he's coming in, which gives him a heck of a one-two punch at that 4-5 position. But I think one of the keys for them is going to be Bogdanovich. Yeah. When that guy is making shots for them, they kind of roll yeah. as a team, and, yeah. and it's more offense. And, and for you know his sake, because I really like him, I you know, coach against him over in Europe and the Euro Championships and stuff, and doing the Nets games. He was with Brooklyn for mm-hmm. a while. He's a great kid. He loves to play basketball, and he can really shoot the basketball. Sometimes he loses his confidence. But when he plays at that high level and the basket looks big to him, he's a huge plus for Indiana. Uh, huge plus. Basket looks big. Uh, these are all... The things for a guy who could win the MVP, if he's the first or second for Giannis. Uh, we didn't mention Detroit basketball only because we were mandated after three hours straight of it to not do it. So much. Uh, we'll talk about the Bucks and their matchup. Don't worry.